John Wick 4 has a lot of Asian actors and Asian themes in it, but is it a great movie? And is it good for Asian male representation? We just watched it last night, David. Let's talk about it. Yeah, we just caught an advanced screening. You know, the critics, the reviewers, they've dropped their reviews. Andrew, long story short, John Wick 4 is a very, very, very good movie. It's great if you like that genre. But today, Andrew, we're not going to be breaking down things like a movie critic. We're talking about the Asian representation and specifically the Asian male representation in John Wick 4. Honestly, I think it could be the best representation in that specific way that we get from a blockbuster Hollywood movie this entire year. Wow. All right, everybody. If you guys are excited about our breakdown on why John Wick 4 is such a good representation for Asian males, uh, please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Real quick, David, how Asian is this movie? Because people are like, yeah, I see fighting. I see martial arts. I see some Asian faces. But how Asian is it? Right, right. If you see the trailers, especially depending on which trailer you watch, the themes and the visuals and the actors are very Asian. Of the top eight actors on this film, if you count Keanu Reeves, who is a quarter Chinese himself, Andrew... Four of the eight are Asian. Yeah. So, but why would anybody question the Asian male representation? And the reason why we're bringing it up is because there was an interview a few weeks ago of Donnie Yen speaking up about how he's like, you know, I, I had to, I wanted to talk with the director and I, I wanted to change the name from Shang and Chang to something else because I said, why, why does my character also have to wear the Mandarin collar? And, and, and that's why some people doubt it. Right whether it was going to be good. Right, there were some questions, but ultimately they called him Kane, Andrew. Guess what? He's a blind assassin who uses a cane as well to feel his way around the world. He's also got some cool, like, computer contraptions and stuff to tell where everybody is. But long story short, Andrew, let's get into the reasons why John Wick 4 was good for Asian representation, but specifically for Asian male representation. I would say point number one, Andrew, Asians really stole the show. Mm. The most memorable fight scenes. And it's not just the guys. Rina Sadayama Akira, who plays Koji's daughter, she probably has the best villain kill in the whole she, movie. She has one where everybody clapped in the theater. Yeah. You, you gotta watch it. I mean, I, it kind of reminds me of Fast and Furious 2 where Sun Kang's character character had um, the best line where he's like, you know, life's pretty simple. You just make decisions, move forward, and you don't look back. You know, sometimes on these blockbusters, an Asian will steal the show maybe for the wrong reasons or in a goofy way. But ultimately, I mean, well, this is a hyper-violent movie, so obviously everybody's like a cold-hearted killer. But, man... It was cool. Yeah, I mean, listen, guys. Everybody gets everybody. The non-Asians get the Asians. The Asians get the non-Asians. But if you made me say who came out on top numerically... Probably the Asians win. Yeah, oh, yeah, as far as, like, I guess, kill count. Body count. Right? <laughs> yeah. Moving on to number two, Andrew, it actually leans into a lot of cultural mythology as well as modern archetypes. For example, Koji's character, who's friends with Keanu, Andrew, he's very Bushido. He lives by the way of the sword. He's got sumo bodyguards. He's drinking, like, matcha tea yeah. with, like, <laughs> Keanu in one of the scenes. Um, the bad guys that are Japanese have the Hanya theater masks. And his daughter, Akira, is more like a modern-day Japanese customer service archetype. So you have the ancient... But you also have the modern archetypes, both. Yeah, and what I loved about this movie is it's actually very cultural. Not just on the Asian aspect, but there's even, they depict Russians and Germans and even French people. And what I'm saying is that even though there is like some sense of a stereotype in the movie, it's done and flipped in such a way where you think it's cool. And I think that that is very important nowadays because that ultimately... People like to watch the stereotype, okay? There's something funny about it. There's something familiar about it. it but they do it in a way where everybody everybody is respected. Yeah, and back to the Donnie Yen thing. I think originally when I heard that uh, Hiroyuki was going to be wearing samurai clothing or like Bushido clothing from the Edo period, I kind of wanted Donnie to be wearing more like traditional Chinese outfits. But I realize now, Andrew, Donnie is actually portraying a very Hong Kong archetype, but it's more of a Hong Kong triad hustler. Yeah, and if you guys have ever seen one of Donnie Yen's movies from Hong Kong called, called, called Chasing the Dragon, like aesthetically and kind of vibe wise, this character is more similar to that. And that is one of my favorite Donnie Yen characters of recent history. So I think that they overall did a really cool job of culturally having him fit the Hong Kong, like kind of ruthless businessman. Moving on to number four, Andrew, Keanu is speaking Japanese, German, Spanish in the film, and he's actually also swearing in Cantonese. So if you want to hear Keanu say, diule, blah, blah, blah to somebody, Watch John Wick 4. Yeah, that's a really fun moment. Um, another thing is overall, guys, the characters are multidimensional. I want to talk about how, and uh, Donnie Yen actually said this in an interview. I'll leave the link down below, but I'll play it right here. It's like he was saying how like, man, like 
his his character Kane is cool. He's emotional too. He mm. does have a soft side. He is he's got some humorous lines. Right. He's a little Ob snarky Hong Kong guy. Yeah. Yeah. His style of fighting is very relaxed, cool, calm, and collected, and like like he's mastered it. Um and everything like that. So ultimately, guys, this is a multi-dimensional character, although they all play assassins and there's obviously all under the shroud of being a dangerous killer. But yeah, I and think there's a lot of so talk cool. about like life and death and philosophy, yeah. actually, like real philosophy that I'm pretty sure they got from like ancient books. Yeah, and um, that leads us to the next point about how all these actors being around almost 60 years old. Yeah, they're all Keanu, Hiroyuki, um, and Donnie Yen are all about 60. And I'm telling you, they bring this wisdom, this like Asian father vibe. And the reason I say that this is Asian masculine representation is because they're not being wimpy, but they still have their soft side with their family. But they really represent a masculinity to me that almost like our dad portrays or other guys that I know that are masculine around our dad's age. Yeah, and honestly, it is kind of like a masculinity from Asia. You yeah. know, these are wise guys. They're secure. They know their culture. They know where they come from. They understand their own identity. So ultimately, that was really cool. I mean, I They're would say- They're not trying to be white. They're not trying dude, to be black. Yeah. These- we're actually, in a weird way, not just for some Asian males, but also some kind of cool Asian father figures, too. Ooh. These were some of the coolest, most dangerous Asian dads in cinema that I've seen in a long time. Yeah, to be honest, a lot of the recent movies, and they're still good in their own way, too, is like they play out the dude as like super wimpy or weak or sort of like a... Just not how I imagine it. I mean, I'm not saying that that's not good, too. Moving on, Andrew, how Asian is Keanu? Keanu is a quarter Asian. He's a quarter Chinese Hawaiian. Here's a photo of him with his grandma. Here's Keanu's dad and mom getting married, like I'm assuming in the uh, 70s. I, th I would say Keanu's dad looked like Bruce Lee or actually the original comic book Shang-Chi. I mean, does Keanu himself look like a Uzbek EDM DJ? I know you've always been saying he yo, looks Central Asian. Yo, Keanu. He's the Eurasian prince. Yeah. I'll, I'll call him that. I don't care, man. I think that he essentially plays as a hoppa, like a half Asian that's on the squad, though. You mean though. even though he's a quarter? Yeah, so here's my thing about uh, Keanu and a lot of, like, mixed Asian people. I think that at the end of the day, they obviously have an Asian heritage, but sometimes on film, if they're not leaning into that character or leaning into that culture, it, it doesn't, you don't feel it because they're kind of that in-between point, right? So if they're in the middle and they lean this way, then it- Would it, you say that Keanu got more Asian as he got older? I do think so. And especially doing all the martial arts films, everything from The Matrix to John Wick. And he, he spent a lot of time around a lot of Asians. He, yeah, he spent a lot of time around a lot of Asian, like martial artists, stunt people, directors. And honestly, bro- he really leaned into the Asian side this movie. He yeah. did. So it's funny because now him being part Asian but leaning into the Asian side, I guess this is, he counts kind of as I an Asian guy. I honestly think sort of the way he acts is like very stereotypically Asian. Keanu almost acts like an 80-year-old man in a really good-looking Hoppa guy's body, and I think that's why he's actually so interesting to the Western world. Here he is handing an Oscar to Bong Joon-ho. His doppelgangers exist in Brazil, and uh, Markiplier actually looks a lot like Keanu when he wears his hair long, so clearly Keanu is, uh, he looks very ethnic, or at least part ethnic. John, you're going to die. You're going to die. Maybe not. And he's still got the Bill and Ted's like, excellent, yeah. tubular. Yeah, I mean, if you're not a fan of Keanu's acting, uh, I think actually you can still enjoy this movie because he actually doesn't have that many lines. He actually lets the other characters tell the story. Yeah, I mean, I would say I read a lot of reviews, Andrew, that said Donnie Yen is almost like the main character in this movie. I would say Donnie Yen Dude. and maybe the Grand Marquis, the French guy Bro, who's actually played is, by the Swedish guy. I don't want to say it's just as much Donnie Yen's movie, but action-wise... Yeah, John Wick carries it because he's in like every scene, but this is like 30% John Donnie's movie. Yeah, and by the way, <laughs> all the other characters are great. The German character's great. The French character's great. Nope. There's a, a character who's Chilean who yeah. speaks Spanish. He's really Guys, great too. I'm, I'm a big fan of Scott Adkins. He always plays the bad guy from the Western world in the Asian movies. Oh. He's always the international bad guy that like gets his voice dubbed over. So he's very well respected as an action star, but a lot of you guys don't know right. his name, but he did an amazing job acting as this. Well, what do we have here? A genuine conundrum, <laughs> a quandary, if you will. Yeah, yeah, he was in a fat anyway, suit. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think of this movie in the comment section below. Are you gonna see it? Is it good Asian male representation? What do you think about like more movies needing to be made like this in the future? Is there anything you could take away Away from it like i don't know i just think that guys could take a look into these asian male characters as much as anything else hey man these were some great asian 
father figures at the same time some asian killers <laughs> so uh yeah you guys let us know what you think about the movie if you watched it or if you're gonna watch it hey thank you so much for watching the hot pop boys and until next time we out peace